Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of That's What's Up Wednesday. You may see my dog popping around, we're in the car, so he gets a little upset that he can't get out. Oh, here he gets. Say hi. He's not gonna say hi, obviously. Um, so today is about purpose. So I have a few questions and I'm just gonna break down each question a little bit about my own experience and my own frustration with purpose and why can't it not just be like boom here it is you know what I mean Ain't that's so annoying we wish we could just have it all laid out in front of us and be like okay this is the next step okay this is the next step but unfortunately that is not the whole ish so um, so do you ever struggle to know your purpose or to find it do you ever feel like you're stuck and you don't know where to turn like you're paused in life like you're just stuck there like you want to move forward but you don't know how you don't know when and you're just waiting and waiting and waiting it feels like the wait is literally a million years do you ever feel like your days repeat themselves like you're like oh my gosh I already lived this day yesterday why am I going through it again or you feel like you just go to work go home go to bed and then you wake up and do it all over again I think that rhymed a little <laughs> someone make me a song <laughs> And then do you ever get so exhausted um, from living? Like you just get tired of going through the day. You get tired of waking up doing the same thing. You get tired of battling um, things. You get tired of just just going through life. You just get tired of it. And you're just like, you know what? I just, I don't want to do this anymore. And you're just like, God, take me now. <laughs> if it all be your will, take me now. And if any of these describe you, please continue to watch. <laughs> so the first one, you feel like you don't know what your calling is. Well, a long time ago I found this quote from Beth Moore and it really uh, stuck with me because I was always like, people tell you you have to have your life basically figure it out X Y Z as soon as you graduate. What are you going to do with your life? What are you, who are you going to be? What are you going to do? And <laughs> And they want you to have your entire life, you know, determined and you're going to do this one thing until you die. You know what I mean? Or until you retire, whatever you choose. And it's like, that's not how life is. Life does not abide by what we plan out. And, you know, God's word says man makes the plans, but it's God who, is, who establishes those plans. Oh my gosh, the ice cream man! Look, Oscar, it's ice cream. Okay, sorry. And so, and the quote is, don't get stuck on what your calling is. You are called to follow Jesus wherever he leads. So sometimes we get wrapped up in what is my purpose? What am I supposed to do? Who am I supposed to be? Well, technically, we are supposed to um, follow Jesus wherever he leads. We are supposed to share his gospel, spread his good news, spread his word. And we're just supposed to take each step according to where he leads and how he leads us. And sometimes that's even still up in the air because you think, well, where is he leading me? What does he have me do? And it's simply just reading your Bible and being obedient unto him, keeping his laws and his commandments and doing what he says to do. Um, and that's simply our purpose until he tells us otherwise, until he uses us however he wants to use us. And I know number the second question a time or two we've all felt a little stuck in in our life whether we're waiting for the person we're supposed to be with whether we are tired in our job whether we feel stuck and don't have a job and wondering how we're gonna get a job or how where this money gonna come from or how am I supposed to move on with my life or I feel like sometimes I've felt stuck um, a lot of times in being paused installed about drives my patience thin because when one thing ends I like to go to the next thing okay done let's move on let's get this life thing rolling and instead of slowing down and enjoying and paying attention to the lesson or paying attention to what's important in this season I tend to want to jump to the next thing come on let's roll let's roll let's move let's move and sometimes you know we don't open ourselves up to um, to pause in life and to say okay in this current season in this pause in my life 
what is God trying to tell me? What is he trying to teach me? And what is he trying to show me? And we have to learn to open ourselves up to, you know, to that. We have to open ourselves up into, instead of getting mad or getting upset at the pause in our life, it's to know, we need to know that the pause is for a reason. The pause and the stall in life is the most important part of life because it is a crucial and vital uh, period <laughs> period in our life to where God is trying to teach us and show us something to move on to the next phase. And the longer we stall and the longer we um, don't open open our eyes or heart or mind up to whatever he's trying to use the more we're going to stay in um what i like to call is the wilderness we're going to wander and wander around in that wilderness until we come to know what it is he's trying to teach us but every season every pause every moment is de delicately and intricately designed for a purpose you're not in this pause for no reason you're not stalled for no reason you think maybe that um sometimes maybe we think and i know i have think god forgot about me god god's plan for me um like he's shutting me out. He's paused me. He's paused me in life. He's shut me out. He forgot about me. He's keeping me from something uh, good. He's uh, preventing me from going on in my life or moving forward in my life. And um, he's keeping me from the very thing that I want. But let me tell you something. That is not God. That is Satan talking to you in your ear. Trying to get you to act irrationally and act impulsively um, to do something outside of the will of God. God has you paused to teach you something. So let's open our ears instead of saying, God, why am I here? Why am I stuck here? Why are you keeping me here? Let's open our eyes and mind and say, God, what are you trying to teach me here? What is the lesson? What is the purpose? What do you need me to learn and know for the next phase, for the next season of my life? Because every season is very crucial and vital to God. It is important. Every step we take is very important. It's not for no reason. And then this may not be biblical, but it's a topic that I reside with quite a bit. Life feels like sometimes it's on a loop. Like we do the same thing every day. And we get tired of coming home and, oh, chicken is for dinner. Oh, I go to bed, I brush my teeth, I wake up. Wait, <laughs> I go to bed. I wake up, I brush my teeth, and I go to work. And it's like I do the same thing at work. It's so repetitive that it's like I'm sick of the repetitive. I want spontaneous. I want change. I want a little spice in my life. A little, you know, a little extra oomph in my life. And it's like where is that oomph? You know, where is that um, that's, that joy or that happiness in life? And some occasionally, you know, we can feel that way. That life is just on a constant loop and it doesn't... It doesn't stop and we think is this it is this all to life I eat poop sleep go to work and die like that's it like there's got to be a little more to life and so but what I've learned through that when I notice that is that I've learned to look up and say God what are you trying to teach me because my theory I don't know that this is biblical so don't <laughs> don't throw rocks at me but my theory is that maybe the he allows us to repeat things to to show us things or to repeat that day um to grab our attention to say hey you know maybe we're doing things a certain way that he wants to shift our focus on it maybe it's our attitude we need to change our attitude um in the manner and way we are acting to where um, he wants to shift our focus and our attitude to a different perspective or view. Um, and then maybe he would like us, you know, maybe we repeat it until we notice the issue um, and until we change it. You know, that's just the thought that I've had because maybe he allows us to walk through it several times until we wake up, until we say, okay, hey, I'm paying attention now, I got it. 
And Lord, help me do it different. Help me not to be so rude. Help me not to be so ugly uh, to people. Help me to be more open to your word and goodness. Help me to share the gospel. Because many times in my life, somebody's asked me a question and I replied impulsively and didn't think about it. And then I remember being like, God, give me one more chance to correct my mistake. And he presented that situation again to, to you know, to where I could correct that impulsive lie that I said just it just came and it's like boom boom and I was just like wait why am I why did I do that why did I say that that's not true and then I was like oh I can't now it's past the point where it's like well this is awkward so I can't be like um so I kind of lied here <laughs> so I just kind of get to where I'm like God present that opportunity to me again so I can correct what my mistake really so I think he puts us on a loop and on repeat sometimes uh, to correct our mistakes or to to grab our attention and say hey listen I have something very important to show you um, and I need you to pay attention and then last but not least I think maybe it's just me but sometimes in life we get tired of going through the motions we get tired of going through the trials and the tribulations of life, we get tired of learning. I mean, for me, I'm like, God, when am I gonna stop learning and start harvesting? When am I gonna stop going through these trials and actually get to use what you have taught me um, in life? You know, why am I constantly feeling like I'm going from one issue to the next? And I'm so frustrated and so upset with it. And I'm like, I'm just done. I just wanna lay on my floor and lay there and look at this ceiling we got like, God take me now. I'm tired of life, I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of going through the motions. I'm tired of having to breathe every day some days. And it's just like, I just don't, maybe that's depression. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm not depressed. But you just get tired of life. And if you know what I mean, I mean, help me here. Don't, <laughs> don't leave me hanging. But sometimes you just get tired and I personally, get tired of you know fighting I get tired of dealing with diabetes I get tired of waiting on certain things to come around I get tired of driving the same road to work every day I feel like I could do it with my eyes closed some people have been driving it way longer than I have but I get I just am like I want something new I want something different I want blah 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 and I think he's trying to teach me Anna be still be still and you feel like sometimes I question where's the joy in life where is the happiness that is supposed to be in life where's that spice that you know that I feel like we're supposed to have that peace and that that undeniable joy in life that you know comes along with a walk with God and it does but we are still human living in a sinful world and there are still ups and downs, but our emotions stay the same. Life is still crazy, but with God, there is a constant baseline of this joy that never leaves. But um, I found myself feeling that way quite a bit, um, but there's a reason. And uh, the reason is not because it wasn't there the whole time, the joy or the happiness or the, the, the excitement of life, you know? Um, that it wasn't there, it was there the whole time. I just wasn't there. I just wasn't present there in my attitude, in my walk with God. Um, because whenever these feelings occur, I was lacking in my relationship with God. I was lacking in my walk with God, my prayer life, my uh, reading my Bible or doing my devotion or study, or maybe there's a couple of videos that I missed and I found myself being like, oh, I missed those and I felt like, why did I miss those? What was I doing that I missed them? Well, one, I was sick, but last week my mind was just so consumed that I was like, why didn't I not do it? You know what I mean? Like, come on, come on, come on, you know? And it's because I wasn't fully present with God. And, um, and sometimes we tend to blame that on God. We tend to we tend to blame our lack of joy or happiness on God, thinking God, like asking God and blaming God, why am I in the same place I feel like I've always been? Why am I still here? I've been here year after year after year, not here like living, but like emotionally or, or physically in the same situation, like singleness, or maybe you're still living at home. Maybe you um, are married and you still don't have children. You're like, God, another year without this, another year. Why is it another year without it? Why can't we just move on to the next phase? Um, and then he showed me, he's like, Anna, 
you only feel this way. You only feel stuck because you don't lift your eyes to me. You don't, your focus is on filling your voids and with worldly things, with a worldly view, with um, how can I fill, fill, fill my voids um, with everything else but God? Um, and how can I, you know, how can I do all these things that I wanna do without God? You can't. You simply can't. I mean, you will never... There is a, a God-specific void inside all of us that only God can fill because it is a God void. And only He can fill that void. Only He can fill that gap. Um, only He can fill that, that itching that's inside of us. You know, that passion or that purpose that we so desperately long for, only he can fill it. And then, um, lift your eyes to me. And, and, and he also was, has told me, Anna, ask me, ask me what the lesson is I'm trying to teach you through this. You know, ask me what you are lacking. Ask me what I'm trying to show you. You lack joy because you lack me. You lack happiness because you are fueling your voids by earthly measure instead of heavenly measure. And why am I, and sometimes we get stuck in why am I here and not there? Like I said previously, why am I here and not there? Uh, comparison is the ultimate joy killer. God did not call us to compare, but called us to our own calling. And each calling, <laughs> And each calling is specific to its own um, because his word says, you know, when we get tired, we need to remember that his word says, run the race with endurance. It says, when I am weak, you make me strong. When you uh, have done all you can do to stand, stand some more, which that is probably one of the hardest things is to stand some more when you're like, I'm tired. I, I can't stand anymore. I can't do anymore. I don't want to. I'm emotionally, physically, and mentally exhausted. And there's nothing more I can do or give. But then his word also says he will uphold us with his righteous right hand. And he will lift up lift, lift us up on wings like, like eagles. So that's what I got to say today. That's my personal experience and um, my advice to y'all. Um, but let's pray. God, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for all my people, all your people watching. Um, I pray that you help us with these four things that we struggle with, Lord. Help us to, um, to instead of, you know, struggling to find our purpose, to do what you have called us to do, and that is to, um, follow you and, and, and to know you and to draw close to you and read your word. Um, God, it is to, um, instead of feeling stuck, Lord, to ask you, why am I here? What are you trying to teach me and show me? And when our days feel like we're on a loop, Lord, help us and show us um, that what needs to change our attitude or maybe the way we're doing things or acting or, or treating other people, Lord, or maybe we're doing something that you want to grab our attention so you can show us what we are doing wrong. And then sometimes, Lord, when we get tired of living, we get tired of fighting the fight, Lord, help us to run the race that is set before us with endurance. And Lord, set us up on your wings um, and make us strong, Lord. In, your we in our weakness, you are made perfectly strong. And give us strength to go through this life. It is not easy. And as the years and the, and the decades pass, Lord, I feel like it gets harder and harder, especially with social media and things constantly in our faces. But let us set aside our phones and our laptops and our TVs and spend time with you and draw close to you and, and not be afraid to ask you because you are a God with open arms. You are a God that says, please, I, I, I want you to ask me. So let us know that you want us to ask you and that you are a friend to us and a father and you are everything and you want to bless us beyond all measure. So I give you these things and I lay these at your feet and be with all these people watching. Thank you, Lord. You are good and faithful. In your name I pray. Jesus. Amen. Thank you guys for watching. Sorry that it's a little longer than it has been, but you'll live. <laughs> but say goodbye to little Oscar <laughs> and have a good week. Bye.